everyone. Welcome to the gift of grants. Um, like Keith said, my name is Victoria Lenhart, and I'm really excited to guide you guys through today's session. We're gonna be talking about grants. How many people have written a grant in this room? Where are we at? Any couple grants out there? Did you receive your grant? Yeah, awesome, congratulations. Um, yeah, right? Um, so I came up with this topic because I have a love-hate relationship with grants. Um, I love them because they're money, right? But I hate them because they're restrictive. Um, and I hate the stress that you're under when you're writing them, like what if I don't get funded? Um, I hate numbers and you have to make a budget, so like can I just not do the budget part? Does someone else wanna do that for me? Um, it's, it can be stressful writing grants, right? So um, another reason I came up with this topic was in my day job I'm giving away $100,000 in grants around the census right now and I've had this experience where I walk into a room and I talk to everyone about what we're doing and how I want to give them money and they're just like panic like oh my gosh oh my gosh no not another thing not another thing we have to do with our limited staff and um, it's almost like this look of fear that comes over when I over them when I say um, let's, let's write a grant so I wanted to have some wonderful grant writing experts join me today to talk about uh, what goes into writing grants, challenges they have managing grants, um, and we're lucky we even have individuals who have reviewed grants so they can talk about what, um, what they've seen on the other side when they're reading those proposals. But since a lot of you um, are new to the grant um, landscape scene, um, I have some definitions for you. Uh, first, the women that are joining us today are all with nonprofits in some way. And I just want to remind everyone that nonprofit is a tax status, not a business model, right? Nonprofits can make money. And one of the ways that they can make money is through grant funding. So grants can be money or product that is given to an organization um, from a grantor that they do not expect to be um, returned. So unlike a loan from a traditional lending establishment where they give you 100,000, you do your project, and you pay the bank back, a grant, they give the 100,000 with no expectation of getting that money back. It's just to be used to fund the program, okay? So that's what a grant is. Um, we're talking about grantors. There's three primary grantors we're gonna be talking about today, two types of foundations and one type of government agency. So the two types of foundations are private foundations and public foundations. And the difference between those two is where the money comes from. So a private foundation, the money comes from primarily one source. Um, so the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, Skillman Foundation, Kresge Foundation, these larger foundations that are granting large sums of money, a lot of that is either family money or corporate money that has been put into an endowment to fund programs. So that's a private foundation. The money came from one source. We also have public foundations or public charities that act in a foundation role. Um, and these are things like your community foundation, where money is given from a lot of sources to one organization, and then that organization grants the funds out to the community. So those are two types of foundations. Then we also have government programs. So you may have heard of the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, MCACA, um, Michigan Film and Digital Media Office, a Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Those are three Michigan-based government programs that offer grants in the creative space. So you have state level um, agencies that have them and then places like QPAD, which is the Central UP Planning District, they do mini grants through MCACA. And our presenters, I think at least two of them, maybe all three of them have received grants through that program so they can talk more to that. Um, but enough from me. I'm gonna introduce you guys to the pros. So ladies, come on out. Yeah. Yes, all at once. Come on out. Yay. All right. Oh, no. Now this one's asleep. Oh. Okay. This, there we go. All right, 
Like I said, we've got some amazing grant pros here today. Everything from writing, receiving, managing, evaluating, and reviewing grants right here at this table. So they have a lot of knowledge to share with you and a lot of experience. And instead of me trying to rattle off all of their experience, I figure it's better if they tell you. So Emily, I'm going to start with you if you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and what types of grants you deal with. Here, you can use. I don't need, no, we don't need a pass. Okay, we don't need are you sure? Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. So, um, my name is Emily Clegg. Um, I work for um, the Nature Conservancy, which is um, the largest environmental nonprofit in the world. Um, so, we're an international organization. Um, we do have a, ooh, um, we do have um, a small satellite office here in Marquette. Um, I, my, my job there is statewide. Um, so I deal with grants for, for that job um, anywhere from, we actually have a minimum on our grants that we're allowed to take on. Um, like our minimum is $25,000, <laughs> which is, so I deal with big grants at work. Um, my normal size grant that I write for my job is um, usually around $300,000, but I've gotten, I've received grants up to um, just over a half a million dollars. So I deal with big grants, and then, um, <laughs> but that's the, that's in the science world. Um, and then I also um, volunteer. I am the treasurer and grant writer for Fresh Coast Film Festival here in Marquette. And for that, um, I write grants in um, sponsorship requests and stuff. For um, those grants are usually smaller. They're more like the thousand dollar to ten thousand dollar. Thank you, Emily. Carol? I'm um, Carol Phillips. I'm the executive director of Liberty Children's Art Project. It's a nonprofit for kids, art, and their champion, working mostly in Marquette and Alger County. So I'm by far probably the smallest uh, nonprofit budget wise here. In fact, we don't, we don't have any, uh, we just work in collaboration with other organizations, non other nonprofits or schools. So we're just, we're basically going into all the other places and collaborating with other like-minded organizations, basically, and creating skills. So my um, kids are, are, I think we're like maybe $40,000 or something like that, but we do a lot of programs right now. About, we're in like, I think, 10 schools right now. 10 or 12 schools. We're working with six or seven nonprofit organizations. We do summer programs, in school programs, after school programs. We're starting to do artists and resident programs in schools, and mostly in schools where there aren't any art, which believe it or not, there are schools that don't have an art teacher, they don't have an art program. And so those are the ones that we're, we're re really targeting, trying to get in there. And we couldn't do it without our, our biggest. Uh, contributor or the people I write grants to are MCACA and there without them we would be doing a lot less programming that's for sure. Awesome. And Nina. Okay well I'm Nina Weyer-Itner and um, I started out my career as an art teacher and um, then I kind of left that to have babies and then right when I had my second baby I decided to start a children's museum. Now, by starting a children's museum meant that I also had to start a 501c3 nonprofit organization. I also had to teach myself, I had no clue what grant writing was, I had no clue what a foundation was, I had no clue, but I figured it all out. And since that time, um, I have written countless grants. Um, I am also on the board of Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and was just recently appointed to the executive committee. Oh, great. Okay. Um, but, I, but because of my relationship with that particular um, state agency, I have reviewed countless grants as well, which is probably for anyone who's starting out in the grant world, if you can get into a, a situation where you can be reviewer of grants, you really learn a heck of a lot. But my organization, the Upper Peninsula Children's Museum, um, uh, we get, um, I have a, a philanthropic budget that I have to raise each year of about $150,000 and out of a $400,000 budget. 
and uh, about a quarter of that comes from foundations. So, so I get a lot of small gifts. Small. Awesome. Well, actually, I think probably twenty thousand is my larger gift. But I've also mm -hmm. written grants though for uh, for almost a quarter of a million. And um, yeah. aren't they amazing? Like <laughs> all of this talent right here in our own community, it's awesome. Um, so my next question for you all is your favorite grant that you've ever had funded. So we'll start off with something positive and like rah rah, right? Um, Emily, you want to go first? Sure. So so Victoria kind of asked me to wear my two hats today, mm -hmm. so I have one for each. So um, I guess I'll start off with the Nature Conservancy. Um, so it wasn't really just one grant; it was one project. So we had we had a project that you know we had clear vision on. Um, it was a hot topic at the time, um, so I actually received three public grants, <laughs> one sub award, um, and two private grants. Um, and fun it was a five-year funding, and it was um, 1.3 million dollars. It was a road stream crossing or um, road stream crossing and infrastructure um, improvement project over in Luce County, which is an underserved county in the Upper Peninsula. Um, basically, looking at fish passage. <laughs> so this is me getting my nerdy science on here. Um, so I reconnected 24 miles of um, river to the main stem and to Lake Superior. Um, let's see, we stabilized or replaced 23 sites, reduced sedimentation by 625 um, tons per year. So I know you're not science people. That, that's, that equates to 25 dump trucks of like sand and sediment per year, we, we reduced that from the river. Um, and basically, we got it done, and how do I know it worked, is that when you physically get hit by a fish in the leg that has never accessed that part of the river before, you know you did something right. So <laughs> that was my favorite project that I've done so far, a grant project. Um, and then for Fresh Coast, um, kind of the reason I got into Fresh Coast was I have kids and my mom was in it and she's like, oh, but there's nothing really for kids to do. So um, I started writing grants for, um, to fund a children's program, children's and family programming for that so that my kids could go to this film festival and I keep doing it. <laughs> I just keep doing it. Um, so that's how I kind of got started. Um, I think our first grant was about, or we did two grants and we received, I think, $4,000 to get that program started. We brought um, the Okie Dokie Brothers, which is a children's band, um, and you know they cost a lot of money. Um, so we were able to keep the prices low so that more people could come um, and basically offer, and then we also offered um, a series of free um, family and children programs. So. One of the reasons I invited Emily to talk specifically about that children's program is they used the grant to hire an artist to come to the area. So if you're someone that is a creative and you're not sure if grant writing is for you, um, but you would partner with someone like Fresh Coast, they can write a grant on your behalf to bring you in to provide programming. So that was, that was one of the big things right. I'm excited Emily touched on because it's right. really important um, for those of you that may not want to take on grant writing yourself. And Victoria and I actually tried it for another situation. We did. We didn't get it, funded. It, it, we didn't get funded. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that happens too. Right. So. That's what I said. Love, hate, right? <laughs> um, all right. Carol, your favorite grant funded project. What are you proud of? Um, well, uh, I think that would be the artists and residency grants. And I write these for schools. And it, it all kind of started with, we have one of our programs that, and I've written grants for, you know, foundations and donations for and written big bigger grants for and state grants and whatever but to run this program and it's our in school art days and I bring four artists into school and the kids have art all day long and it works really great if you're in a small school like up at Pal Township or Autrain Onoda and Superior Central it works pretty good but when you start getting to even like schools like Ishpeme and into a middle school it just it doesn't it doesn't really work because the if the kids don't have just one room where they're in the whole time and the scheduling of the teachers and it was just kind of chaos. So I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? So I started, uh, MCACA started a new um, grant that was called Artisan Residence and only schools can apply for it. And so I thought, how are we going to fix this problem where I can get art into these schools, but in a less chaotic 
in, in a way that's going to function better. So I started writing these grants for these schools because there's no way in the world those people are so busy to even get an administrator on the mm -hmm. telephone is like a miracle. <laughs> They're <laughs> never going to write this grant. It's never, ever going to happen. So I'm the project manager, and basically the school hires Liberty Children's Art Project that I direct uh, to run the service, the art services that the money from the grant will provide the school. So, but it's for the school, it's the school grant. And so um, when we do that first, it's not really like, an, it's not a, they're not interested in an art teacher coming into the school, they're interested in an artist coming into the school. And you come into the school and so you're using your, what kind, the kind of art you make and your background as an artist, and you're using a, a theme and I really love this theme of identity for this area especially because kids are so proud of being Uyghurs and they're, they have so much history in them and like an Ishpani and the miners and all that kind of stuff and they're really, they're really connected to that. And I mean, because we're so isolated and a lot of kids have never been out of the UP or barely and so it's just, you know, something they can really grab a hold of. So that's a, so I'll, I'll go into a school like and work with a classroom teacher for um, two hours a week, two different classes and do like for, for eight weeks. And so it's on a theme. So if it's like on the identity theme of community or whatever, we, you know, start with yourself and go through family and then go into community. And, and it's sort of uh, based on a, a theme like that kind of builds onto one theme or one project onto the next builds. And it's, kids are totally excited about it and it's just, it's very rewarding. So it's been my favorite. Awesome. Well, I, 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 am, I have one, I have lots of favorites, but I have <laughs> one kind of fun story, but um, I, I've always seen grant writing as being a storytelling. I'm telling mm -hmm. a story, a compelling story and um, being a children's museum, I can get away with putting wow and you know, you know, crazy words in there, and I can get away with that. Um, but you can't in a lot of other ways. But um, you know, you know, I always have to remember when you're grant writing, it, there's the LIA of giving, and I do a lot of advising to people who want to get into grant writing. And um, you know, you always say, oh well, Oprah Winfrey has lots of money, but yeah, well, she has lots of money, but she has no. And the LIA of giving is linkage, interest, and ability to give. And so, um, so, uh, so that always guides me on where I actually go to. But um, we, I, ha I got two hundred thousand dollars to con redo the entire children's museum facade, which was desperately needed. New windows, new everything, and that was from um, a, a foundation linked to our mines up here. And and uh, it was um, a very interesting way that I, my husband my beloved husband, who is a the world-renowned expert of the freshwater crabs of Africa, in case you wanted to know, was at a conference in, about crustaceans in uh, Costa Rica. And um, San, so he took me there, and because he was in with his crustacean people all the time, I sat by, I sat in the outside in the courtyard and wrote a grant. And that's where I wrote this particular grant about the front facade. And, and so I would take pictures of myself with fancy drinks and my computer and sitting out by fancy trees and stuff. But anyway, um, so that, that particular grant was um, just so absolutely phenomenal for us because it was something we so desperately needed and it isn't really, a lot of things aren't sexy, you know? I mean, you just, you know, windows aren't very sexy. But I was able to, uh, I was able to uh, make it sexy and they, and they funded it and then I was, oh my God, that was great. Awesome. <laughs> Nina and her unsexy windows. I'm <laughs> always going to remember that now. <laughs> um, so challenges to grant writing. I talked for a hot second at the beginning about how budgets just aren't my thing, right? <laughs> There's some parts of grants that we just, they're required, we can't get around them. Um, so I'm hoping to hear from you guys, what is your biggest challenge specifically when you're writing a grant? This is pretty funny because I am a budget person, like so much so that I started writing grants for Fresh Coast and then I was like, I need to be your treasurer because I have no idea like what your budget is. So, <laughs> so for me, the challenge um, is telling the complete story. I know you touched on storytelling. For me, I'm, 
as, as a scientist numbers person, um, telling of that story from the beginning to the end mm -hmm. and really having that cohesive vision of what your project that you're applying for you know, this funding is going to be like. So having that complete vision, I, I'm a project manager too, and so I think in like steps, and so being able to step back and see all those steps put together and, and being able to communicate that, that is, always, the narrative part is always my biggest challenge. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'll do all, I'll do yeah, budget artists, all day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stuff up. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, yeah. I don't even, I, I can't even think in terms of wow. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, well Carol Carol and I, we don't have anything to do with money, but you know the wow. We could work together. Yeah. Actually, there you go. <laughs> Let's write a great guys. We yeah. So that's my answer. Awesome. <laughs> Carol, how about you? Um, my, the hardest part for me is getting started because mm -hmm. especially the state grants are, you know, I actually tried to write an NEA once and I think I gave up halfway through just going like, I can't, oh, yeah. you know, someday I will again, but it, it's like there's a lot of parts and you can't, you, you got to think about it for a long time and you, you can't, you can't write this the night before, <laughs> although some people do, I don't know how they do it, I can't. I start way before and I have to write and I have to look and I have to rewrite and I have to think about it. You have to gather all these sources to, like you have to have, you want to have pictures and, and then there's the budget, oh my God, that's a whole like three days I have to work up to that. You know, and you gotta look at it, you have to think about it again. It's just, it's nothing, I, I really had to start like three weeks before. And that's, I mean, that's just how I work and I don't finish it until I, I'm, you don't ever want to be the person who's pushing the button a half an hour before it's due at 11.30 at night because everyone else is pushing the button and the thing is clogged and you're freaking out because if they don't get, if, if you don't follow those guidelines, if your grant isn't, they don't even look at it. Mm -hmm. Like if, you, if you, your narrative is more than the number of pages they say, you're, it's You're like, done. I mean, there's so much competition that if you don't totally follow the guidelines to the T, give them everything they want in the way they want it, you're, it's like you, there's no way in the world you're ever going to compete. So I just, grant writing for me takes a lot of time and I really have to work up to it. Mm -hmm. I start way before three weeks. <laughs> What's well, your biggest I, challenge? You know, I, it, Carol's absolutely right. You know, every every granting institution has guidelines, mm -hmm. and you have to, you really have to do your guideline research. You have to look at everything that they want and everything they don't want. And, and I'm with Carol. I'm I'm not a very good budget person. I, I always have very creative um, um, <laughs> adding machines. Like, Whoa, where'd that number come from? Um, but yeah, yeah, right. I'm not very good at that. But but I but now I write a lot of grants and then I keep them all in my computer. And I'm a I'm a pretty creative person and I I love like cutting and pasting words. And I think, oh, sweet, that was a really nice passage I used in that grant. I'll go use it in this one. So you can do that. You know, you can. The bigger challenge is when you're asking for something really new and specific and you've got to rewrite the whole thing. And you're absolutely right. you got to start it way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So Nina mentioned new and specific. And that's the perfect segue <laughs> into my next question. Um, so have you had a grant funded project that has changed from the original proposal that you put forward to the funder? And if so, how did it morph and what, how did you approach the funder? And if not, how do you keep your project on track with what you said you were gonna do? Because it's like you're writing this proposal and you think this is how it's going to play out, but it might not. So what, how do you manage that process? Emily. Um, so Yes, I have had that happen. <laughs> um, um, by specific example, you know, I was talking about our road stream crossing one. Well, we had one road stream crossing that we had budgeted to be like a hundred thousand dollar project, and we went out in the field, and it turns out that the landowner had just replaced it 
we didn't know that they were planning on replacing it. So, um, so we're like, uh oh, <laughs> that was a big chunk of our budget. What are we going to do with this budget now? So, um, the first thing you do is you call the funding agency <laughs> and you explain. Like, it, it is always best to be upfront with them when something is going wrong. Um, but always approach them with ideas in the back of your head about like, how can you fix this? Um, I, I like to give them options. So I usually come up with like three options of what I can do when something went wrong um, and have them be part of the process of helping you fix it so they, they feel like their money is being used to the, to the best um, possible way, even if it's not what you had applied for. Um, and, and I've found that like when, when things do go wrong like that and if you are upfront about it, they're, they're more, they're not gonna pull your funding if you're upfront about it, I've found. So I've had it happen like two or three times on big ones. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, just, I mean, being upfront, asking lots of questions, um, coming with solutions to, the, to them um, is, is a big help as well. So they know that, you know, you're trying to fix the problem, you have stake in it. Um, and you're still able to produce um, some form of metrics that you can report on in the end. Awesome. Carol, how about you? Have you had that um, experience I, I yet? I haven't really had that experience, but I do know one thing that's really important is, I think, one thing I know that, I, that you can never do is never say, like, um, I want to give back the money, I can't, because that's just, like, I don't think you're ever going to get a grant again from that organization, if you like. Here's your money back, I just can't do that. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really had that experience. I mean, for me, it would be like if uh, a school closed or an organization I was working with closed, that would be, and then I would have to. But I can imagine being creative and coming up with something <laughs> somewhere else. For, <laughs> but for me, often, I don't get the money that I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you often don't get the amount that you're asking mm -hmm. for. And, and then you have to you know, redo the budget and even redo the narrative. And mm -hmm. I find in my situation where I'm working with programs and uh, it, it can be hours or days that you're 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 going to run this program. It's like I can always tailor back the days, or I can just kind of scoot back the the program. I can cut a couple things and and kind of adjust it that way. And I've never had to call a funder before and say that, but they they do usually ask for a revision, and so mm -hmm. you can do that in the narrative right. and, and just mm -hmm. tell them like, oh well. You only gave me this much money half of what I asked for. And so it's okay, that's fine, thank you, and I will adjust by doing this. So it's, yeah. Awesome. Well, for me, like the biggest change would be timing. Um, mm -hmm. I might mm -hmm. have to, it might take me longer mm -hmm. to, to do a project. But you know, one of the things that I'm super duper um, careful about is I don't, I only ask for things that I absolutely want. And there's a lot of donors, a lot of funders out there, grant sources that will have a specific, like, um, mission. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if that mission does not fit my agenda, I'm not asking for that mission. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask for that money because, you know, I don't, I don't want to shift what I'm my my strategic plan to mm -hmm. satisfy a, a donor. And I've had that before too, where somebody will come mm -hmm. in and say, you know, it might not be necessarily, it might be, it might maybe like a a family foundation or something that said, well, mm -hmm. we want these particular things to happen in the community. And then you'd say, well, no, I, I don't, you know, I can't take that money. I don't, because it's just going to divert my projects. Mm -hmm. So. No, oh, that's really great. That idea of like mission drift and going, writing a grant to get the money instead of writing the grant to forward your mission. Yeah, right. Yep. I, I've had that happen a lot too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, where it looks and, really and it, like, ooh, and it always, money. <laughs> uh -huh. And then when you do accept it, and then you're like, crap, what did I just yeah, do? I know. <laughs> yeah, more work. <laughs> awesome. Um, my last question before we open it up to the audience is if you had one tip for someone interested in pursuing grants, what would it be? <laughs> Budgets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, really, really detailed budgets of your, so I'm, I'm in the nonprofit world, so really, really detailed budgets of what you spent your money on last year, so you have, you can have projections, um, and then 
Um, I always call it, like, if, it, if contracting is part of your funding source, I always call the contractor and get a quote so that I know exactly what I'm putting in there. Um, but yeah, but having, you know, your, your past budgets, having your past accounting um, broken up into multiple different layers, so like fine, fine detail to, you know, a wider budget, um, it just makes it, it's just the upfront work that makes it so much easier to actually do your budget of your grant. Um, and then um, having a really good budget narrative on exactly what you're spending that, mon that grant money on what it is funding, um, and then I also, sometimes it's not asked for, but I always put it in there, is what my organization's kind of budget is, um, especially for Fresh Coast. So a Fresh Coast budget is roughly around um, $50,000. Um, that does not include match. We didn't even talk about match, but um, <laughs> but that's, that's the money that we have to work with, so we have to hit those projections. Um, and I know that, and I know how much money we need in each different category, um, and I can apply to grants for one or multiple, or if we have a special program we want to do that year. Um, I know exactly how much I need, um, and then I have a suite of grants that I can apply to to try and get that money. So um, I think that's everything. Yeah. Awesome. Carol? Um, well, I'm like Nina. When I was handed this organization, just kind of a funny way. Uh, the first thing this woman that was the director said to me is, um, you need to write a final report for a grant that we had last year. You need to submit that and then write the grant for this year. Well, mm -hmm. I've never written a grant in my life. I'm an artist, I'm a, I am, have an art degree. And it's like, okay. So I had absolutely no idea and I just started from the basics, but what I've learned, and when you go to uh, workshops, the Michigan State will, the MCACA gives workshops, um, they come up here every couple of years or so, about uh, how to write a grant, and it's very helpful. And um, what they always say, and what is so true, is read the guidelines. Oh, yeah. Like, read, like, if you can, if you're, you can, anyone can write a grant, it's just, read the guidelines, and then what I do is I copy the guidelines, mm -hmm. copy and paste them, I put them in my document that I'm writing for the narrative, and I answer all their questions. And like Nina, I go to Lansing and review these grants too, and that's what the reviewers are looking at. They're like, okay, what about this question? How did they answer it? So if you, if you just have it, in fact, you can read a grant when you're reviewing grants, you look at grants and you know who has reviewed grants before mm -hmm. because you can see the way that they set it up. And it's like, it's so simple. You just copy and paste the guidelines into your document. It's like, uh, how, do, how are these, how is this money going to contribute to the community, you know, the culture of the community, da, 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 and you go, the culture of the community, this money will, con <laughs> and you just answer the question. And sometimes I'll go back and I'll take out the copy and paste that I did, I'll, uh, and so it's just there. But it's it's simply organized so that someone reviewing the grant can just say, and this is how they answered this, and this is how they answered that. And each one of those parts, that's how they're gonna score. They're gonna score, and if it's simply clear to them what you're gonna do with the questions they need answered, it's, you're gonna get a way higher score. <laughs> There's just no doubt about it. So. I think that that is um, my advice. And they do actually score it. There's like points. It's like a middle yeah. school test. <laughs> yeah. there, there are points in parentheses after right. all those questions. Yeah. So you know exactly what they're scoring yeah. you on. Yeah, and when you're, when you're reviewing grants, it's like if the thing is all over the place and chaos and like this and that, and it's like you can't really put it all together. The answer to the question that you need to answer in order to give it a certain score you're, you know, you, you're gonna score it lower because you're not sure. You're not sure how they're gonna achieve that goal that the grant wants them to achieve. But if you, if they just spell it out in black and white, you're like, well, there that is, and then you give it a high, you know, yeah. So it's very simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I agree, is, is to be on a review panel is really good. And, just, and then ask other people, you know, if you can look at their grants and read them. And then when you do do a grant and it's unsuccessful, 
you know, calling them and asking mm -hmm. them, what can I do better? Um, don't, you know, ream them over for not giving you money, but just, you know, say, well, you know, how can I make that better? Is there something I didn't say? But, um, but, and then also just keep writing grants. I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. you, I, there's some, t some foundations that I'll write to seven, eight times until, you know, when finally I get it. But then there's also, I'll say, well, it's kind of a waste of my time to keep going back to a particular funding source that's never giving me money. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, you know, you're not gonna win the game unless you're in the game, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> um, so if someone did want to become a grant reviewer, Carol and Nina. Emily, have you reviewed grants? I have reviewed little ones. Okay, not. so you all have reviewed. How would one get involved with that? I'm just ad-libbing questions now. I'm sorry, but I'm really <laughs> you interested. Can, you can uh, submit your name to mm -hmm. the Michigan Council of Arts and Cultural Affairs uh -huh. in that okay. particular place because it's all peer review. Uh -huh. And um, they- and They're always looking for people. Yeah, they're always mm -hmm. looking for people. And you get an honorarium, actually. I think it's 100 bucks to go down there and oh, wow. review grants. Only if you're from the UP. Oh. There you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. you have to stay overnight. You start at oh, nine. Oh, right, right. They do give you, yeah, they'll give mm -hmm. you a room to stay in. Right, that's, which is really nice too. But, um, yeah. Awesome. All right, we are going to open it up. Oh, there's my pink shirt volunteer. Fantastic. I'm told this is for you. Maybe. <laughs> oh, no, it's so tall. Here, you, you can. <laughs> All right, if you have a question for the panelists, we'll get the microphone out to you. So one of the things that you mentioned at the start was, particularly for you, sorry, I can't remember names that well always, um, but you mentioned how the hardest part for you is like getting started in general. Like is there any maybe consistent um, things that you do that you notice that helps motivate you to actually get started and not feel like intimidated by looking at the guidelines or, like I understand situations can always be different of how things can break down, but is there anything that you notice is like kind of like a, there's always these three things that happen that help me get started in this process. You know, I, I, have, this, I have this grant right now that I have to write. One is time, I've got to find the time. But I, but I am writing it in my head all the time. So, I, I, you know, I think, I don't know how you are, but I, I'm always composing things in my head about it, and then I might jot a note down, but, um, yeah, I, I don't, but then I like telling the story, so I, I, when I find the time, but also, I don't know, my job, gets, I'm interrupted constantly in my job, so sometimes I have to sequester myself someplace else, and then just start writing it. Like Costa Rica. <laughs> that's way yeah. more exciting than crappy yeah. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. where I sequester yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Or sometimes I just write, yeah, little, uh, all through the year I'll make little notes like for this bike. Mm -hmm. I have a folder on my laptop that's just like ideas for grants and then just put a little paragraph and put another mm -hmm. little paragraph and just as I keep thinking about it. But one thing I was thinking about with our even our, our last question is, one thing that really helps with grant writing is um, you can often either listen to the review of your grant oh, or, get the, uh -huh. or uh -huh. get the comments from the reviewers. Mm -hmm. And I get those back and those go right into my what to do next year. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I'm like, what? That's not right. I did not do that. But sometimes <laughs> I'm like, they are so right. I should have done that better. So, I mean, just keeping notes mm -hmm. about how, what you want to include, and you're right. It's just like popping yep. up and to your mind about, oh, that would be great to put into. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then, you know, and then just when the time comes, start early and get the guidelines, and and it's it's actually not as daunting as it as it might seem. Up, yeah. Up here. Yeah. Yeah, I think of it a lot like a middle school test. <laughs> you know, with the points and everything. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, my hardest part is actually the narrative part. So for me, I have to start with that because it takes me the longest. Um, and actually telling the story from start to finish, and most of that might not even go into the grant application, but just having that story from start to finish. And I actually just two weeks ago learned a new tip that I'm gonna try on my next grant. Um, I learned about, um, what is it called? It's like the 22 tips of storytelling by Pixar. 
I had never heard of that before. So go Google that. It gives you 22 tips about telling a story. So I'm going to try that on my next one, and I'll let you know how it works. So, so that's my next project. <laughs> awesome. More. Oh my gosh, so many hands. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so are some grants harder to find than others? Like, are is there a like a warehouse on the internet of them? You know, there used to be a resource yeah. at, the mm -hmm. library. at the library. It was There's like amazing, book. yeah, mm -hmm. right. They had an amazing, re but they took that away. Um, but you know, like organizations like mine, you tend to go back to the same ones mm -hmm. over and over and over again. So I don't, I do not search out new ones very often. And then when, when I do search out new ones, I have to write so many years until I get recognized. But again, it's that linkage in interest and ability to give. And I have, I have put together a, a whole resource um, that I share with other organizations, and I'm always happy to share it, um, that tells you everybody local that you can go uh, to. But it, of course, it's very much children's kind of program. So. Yeah. Um, more secret? And are there any political <laughs> ramifications? Like, are there some that it's who you know that those are the people that get the grant. No, no. I don't think so. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe some of the family foundations. Some of the you know, family they're gonna, foundations. Yeah. Right. So they're going to have yeah. some of the same people that they give to every single right. year, and they mm -hmm. may have a, a mission on, on who they want to give to. I have one uh, foundation that I know you asked to too, but they have a camp out in Deerton. And mm -hmm. one of the schools that I love to do programs out of is the Deerton School of Audrey mm -hmm. and Noda. Mm -hmm. And I, they want to give, you know, they're like, oh, she's out in Deerton. It's like, I, I, I really do think that, you know, it's like, it's like tugs at their heartstrings of like, yes, we want to support the children mm -hmm. out in, you know, so. But I mean, another thing is, and that I've run into is that for my organization, someone down in Florida doesn't want to give to LCAP because it's like it's got to be someone who knows a story up here mm -hmm. like someone who has some kind of connection to the UP and knows about the ruralness of it and how those children might be out in the woods and you know might not be having the opportunity the kids that are living in you know Chicago are or something like that and so I find that it, they need the they need to have a local connection to have way more success with that if they have a they kind of are relating to, um, you know, the audience that you're uh, trying to, you know, work with. Yeah. Um, and then the foundations and you know the state and federal. Like once you put your name or your email on their list, they they usually send you like the next mm -hmm. round of grants and when they're due and you're on their list, so you mm -hmm. can sign up for their listservs and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. And also, um, yeah, if you just call people. <laughs> you know, I, I cold call, like, foundations and just, like, ask them that sometimes. You, like, know, I, you know, I think, you know, I'm a huge believer in networking. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just, and I have, my organization has been, benefited tremendously because I just, I'm just out there trying to meet people and talk to people. And, and so, um, because I, I also go through, I mean, I get involved, I got involved in the Michigan Museums Association, was on their board for six years, and, and Michigan Council of Arts, and the people I meet through mm -hmm. all those things bring me sources. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you don't, you know, it's not just keeping your head in a book. You gotta, you gotta get out there. In fact, um, my, one of my colleagues from a museum down in Lansing told a donor about the Children's Museum, a foundation about the, our Children's Museum who had a connection and in, in they then ended up coming to visit and inviting me to write a proposal to them and that, you know, it, it was all about people, people opening doors for people. Awesome. All right, next. Um, I just had a question about, like, so far this has kind of been in the context of organizations um, and let's say there's an independent art, artist, which I'm, there's probably several in this room, um, who wants to get a project funded, some kind of public art project or something like that. Um, do these grants necessarily need to be contained within a larger organization is one question. And 
to what degree, like getting funded, if you were to take on a project and it was your job for a while, and that's what you're writing the grant towards, is it ethical to include your a wage for yourself in that grant? Absolutely. Yeah, there is. Absolutely. Well, you know, it never yeah. happened if there yeah. wasn't a director right. or right. Right. Well, you know, Charlie, that that was some one of my concerns about mm -hmm. being talking today because. Um, um, because of that, they, because the individual artists, there are fewer opportunities for mm -hmm. you. And then, you know, like Charlie, if you were to like suddenly say, I, w I have this enormous project, Nina, will you be the fiscal agent? That's now, unless you're under my mission, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. If you were going to do like something with kids, I might. But, um, but yet, um, I have been lately doing a lot of um, talking to people who do creative things who are interested in starting 501c3s because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I you know, I run a business, you know, um, and my, my my business could never survive if I weren't a 501c3 mm -hmm. because I need philanthropic money. It would never survive just on the mm -hmm. earned income that I get, which is only like 60% of my budget. So that's something, you know, to think about too, you know, is in, in, I don't know, maybe that there's a consortium of people that would like to start a 501c3 under which some of those projects could be funded. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I, I was concerned about that. Partnerships always look way good. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so if you are an independent artist, I would highly recommend partnering with someone else if you guys want to write a grant together. Mm -hmm. so. But there is a partnership. Why are they um, just showing that you are a good collaborator. Mm -hmm, yep. um, you're a team player. You're really trying to better a situation, a community, um, yep. people, and, and brings different skill sets together. Yeah, that's that's it's a big. But most and are going to ask you what, who are your other partners? Right. Yeah. 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 There's there, usually a question even in most grants about who are, who are your partners. Yeah. Right. So, you can get yeah. more right. like for me. I don't have a building. I mean, right. I would, I'm a traveling art teacher, so, or art organization in the back of my car and in my basement. And so it's like I team up with the Children's Museum for we do a one thing every year, and maybe we'll do more in the future, but where um, I come to the Children's Museum and we have a, it's their second Thursday event, and, you know, we do all these art things, and so I'm bringing my skills into the Children's Museum, which, you know, is a perfect fit. And it's like, so all these, you know, we're just kind of getting twice as much done, basically. Yeah. yeah. But I want to say there are some, because um, I'm an artist myself, and I've written some private grants through MCACA, uh, the QPAD, which is a, a mini grant, it's a regranter. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do have uh, professional um, development grants for individual artists. And it's not a ton of money. I think the most you can ask for is fifteen hundred dollars, but it's like, you know, it's it's pretty great when you get it, and I've gotten it before. So there are, there are some opportunities for, and that's not you know you don't have to be a five hundred one c u three to do that, just an individual artist. So they're out there. Well, you could look at some you know some family foundations might not have as stringent rules on that, but I yeah yeah I don't. Oh, it takes some investigation. There's the L3C model. Have any of you heard of that? The what? L3C. So it is a low profit, limited liability corporation. Mm -hmm. Michigan recognizes them. Um, they are allowed to accept foundation dollars like a nonprofit, but they are not tax exempt. They don't need a board. It's kind of like a hybrid between a nonprofit and an LLC. It's not recognized nationwide. Um, but it is recognized in Michigan, so the family foundations and the private foundations can spend their 5% required spendable on these L3Cs. So that might be another option, is to restructure your business or start an L3C specifically for granting. I know there are none in the Upper Peninsula. I know there are some in Detroit and Grand Rapids area, but no one has used that structure in the UP yet. So I don't know that our foundations up here would be open to it, but it is a thing to explore. Cool. Looks like we have time for one more, maybe? Yes, yeah, so I have a question. Um, I'm in the process of applying for a grant um, <clears throat> through Southern Arts. So this particular grant 
is for all the states in the South, and they provide $5,000 for an artist in each one of those states, and then you're allowed to put your name in the hat for ten dollars and $25,000. Where I'm confused with this is they ask for um, exhibitions, educational background, art, related employment, residencies, awards, honors, and it goes on and on and on. But then it says, this information will not be shared with the panelists. So they're asking for all this information about who you are as an artist. And by the way, I'm a youper. I'm just down there teaching right now. But anyway, um, so they want a portfolio of, of your work. So they're going to look at images of your work and it seems as though it's just based on that. Although they're asking for all these other things and that's the confusing part for me. Why are they asking for all this, all these other things but when it comes down to it, they say they're not gonna share it with the panelists. And I guess the panelists would be the people who are, it's you had another name for it? The is, it is it a state, if you're saying it's a state organization? Um, well, it's for the southern states. So, so but each, is it, I'm just thinking if it's, because is, is it a, like a private foundation or a state? Well, I think it may be a private foundation. Because, because yeah. they, they have different rules, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah. I, if it was, um, you know, the, I don't know, it seems like it would be a state because they're probably just looking at you whether you're eligible mm -hmm. to even be considered. That well, would be my thought, your, but. Yeah, that right. would be my thought, mm -hmm. that but they would yeah. sure you're eligible and that you, they even wanted to consider you to be part of it. And right. then it seems like you would pass that. Right. That, that, that test, basically. Yeah. Well, you and have, have to be a resident of a southern yeah. state. That's, you mm -hmm. know, and they ask for all your personal background, blah, 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 you know, yeah. your address and, and all that sort of stuff. But for me, it's confusing because they're asking for all this information. Yeah, it's probably information. sequential. It's probably mm -hmm. a sequential application. You know, you get past yep. the first step, you get to the second step. Oh, and then they would look at that. Then they would look at that. So, I think so initially, it's just you, your artwork that they're looking yeah. at. And yeah. then if you then they then say, like this, guy's a, this guy's a good guy, We're right. going, he's going on to the next step. Or maybe just a, like, there's like a zillion million applicants is just the, just the narrow down to the, the, the people that they would think that would actually yeah. qualify to get the grant. Yeah. Well, there's a phone number here, so I'll call them and ask them, but this was an opportunity to perhaps get some yeah. insight yeah. from you That's ladies. It's a little different. That's kind yeah. of different. I think we've still got time, hey? Like five more minutes? You want to get someone on this side of the room? Michael? <laughs> um, so this kind of goes back to like how to get started, because for my experiences, I don't even know where to go to find grants. I mean, I Google it and I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> you, go, you, you, you ask one of us. That's what we well, do. yeah, so like you talked yeah, about don't, networking. Yeah, don't, like, I can't, like I told you earlier, I told all these people earlier, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Go out and find people who are going to help you. I mean, I am totally happy to hand over that whole big thing I have to you. And, but, you know, I mean, people want to help people. You just, you just ask people, and they will help you. And especially in this community, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all want to see everyone do better. Yeah, we do. So we do. Is, is that the key then? Just networking with people? Is there no other place to then find well, that kind yeah. of information? <laughs> you know, there are foundation directors. <laughs> yes, there yes. are. <laughs> yes, you can, okay. yeah, you can go, yeah. I mean, it'd be this thick. You're going to go through them. And sometimes, some of them are um, at a, in categories, but, it, but yet you've got to remember that LIA of giving. One time my board members and I sat at the library when they still had it and we were looking through it and they said, oh my God, this one gives to children's museums for kitchens. Let's ask for a kitchen, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, holy crap, I don't want to be freaking asking for a ch kitchen. I don't need a kitchen. So you know, but they were so excited because there was money for a kitchen for children's museums. So anyway, I don't know. Just have to, yeah. But there are directories out there. I don't know where you can put, get your hands on them now. I have Grant Station. I know. So you can call me and I can look it up. Yeah. Right, right, right. This person would definitely. Yeah, right. Because Rowan Lead would have resources. Yep. She's helped me do it too. Yep. Also, um, Foundation Directory does Friday emails of all of the national RFPs that open that week. So you just, you can go on Foundation Directory. Um, I, 
think it's foundationdirectory.org. You can just Google it. It's got orange branding, so you know you're in the right spot. Um, and they just sign up for their weekly email, and that's a lot of the ones I've sent you guys have been an email that I've gotten from them right. saying, priority to the Upper Peninsula. Like, what? Who does that? Um, it's so cool when you see them, and then you can pass them along. So, yeah, get on as many email lists as you can that send out RFPs. All right, it's like two minutes to 11.30, so I think we can squeeze one more in if anyone has an easy question. <laughs> Over there. I'm just finding that one that is easy. <laughs> um, oh, the public foundation. The way you described it, it almost reminded me of, I mean, it sounds like a tax, so is it like an elective tax almost that people do in regards to like a bunch of like I guess I'm wondering how do you find those people for a public foundation where it's like private public and how does that not become I, I don't know I guess this feels like a gray area between like a private foundation mm -hmm. and a public foundation do I don't know I'm trying to figure it out I know all the IRS <laughs> so the IRS um, <laughs> the IRS categorizes you as a private charity um, their threshold is 30%. So 30% of your, your funding needs to come from the public to be considered a public charity. If less than 30% comes from the public, you're considered private. Um, and that's where the private foundations come in. So um, I'm trying to think, there's a lot of health-based health, or health -based foundations in the area that you might be familiar with, like um, the Superior Health Foundation, the West End Health Foundation. Portage Health Foundation. You'll see them out fundraising, even though they're foundations, because they need to meet that 30% threshold to keep their public charity status. Um, the community foundations are the same thing. The community foundations are out raising the money to get that 30% threshold so they can be considered public. Because as it was alluded, there are different rules for the private foundations, which one of them is you have to spend 5% of your money every year. You have to give away 5%. Um, so, for the public charities, it's not as strict. They can um, give away what their board feels is an adequate spending policy. So if the market's doing bad, they can say, we're only gonna do 3% this year because we've had a lot of losses. We haven't made um, the interest on our endowment. So they have these funds that they invest in the market and they spend the interest. That's how a lot of the public foundations work. Um, so it, it really depends on where their money's coming from. Um, and if they're able to reach that 30% threshold. And that's all determined by the IRS. Awesome. Thank you. For Thank you, guys. That. This is amazing. I hope everyone learned something new about grants. I did. Um, can we have a round of applause for these wonderful women? They are phenomenal. Thank you guys so much. And I heard you guys are going to lunch now, so enjoy lunch. Um, and I think the next presentation is at one o'clock. Yeah, one o'clock in this room. Yeah, yep. So back here at one o'clock, you guys have a great lunch.